So in this lab, we are um, creating memory bits, uh, and we're going we're looking at um, synchronous logic and asynchronous logic, or, or um, unclocked logic. Um, and we are also, in order to create those bits, we need to talk about how we create them with a switch. Um, and we're going to use a switch to create zeros and ones, and we'll use an SR latch to debounce that switch. Um, we talked about that in a previous part of the lecture. So what I want to do right now is talk about a switch and debouncing the switch. But before I talk about debouncing the switch, let me just talk about switches. So <clears throat> um, there are various kinds of switches, um, and you should know the basic kinds of switches. There's a, what's called an SPST switch, and you don't need to know all the switches here. But the, the standard switches are the SPST, which is a single pole, single throw. What that means is that there is a single input, single output, and a single wire that either connects with the output or di is disconnected with the output. So that's a single pole, single throw. It's either on or off. It's the light switch for your bedroom lights, right? It's either on or off. It's, it's, um, it's a single uh, circuit, single wire that comes in and goes out, and the switch just disconnects it or connects it. There is a, a little bit more specifically, whoops, specifically if you're buying switches, in particular if you're talking about push button switches, there's the NO and the NC, that's the normally open and the normally closed. And what, what that means is that um, uh, in particular for a, a push button switch that doesn't have a stay, right, that it, you just push it and you have to hold it, um, then when you're, when you're not touching the switch, it's either normally open or it's normally closed, and when you are touching the switch, you change the state, um, the button, right? So that's a push button. Um, <clears throat> some push buttons, you push it and it changes the state, and the state stays, and you don't have to keep your finger on it. Um, but there are such things as a normally closed and normally open. The kind of switch that we're particularly interested in for this lab is the SPDT. S remember, S, S stands for single, D stands for double. P is pole, T is throw. Single pole, double throw. Single pole, double throw. There's a single signal coming in or going out, depends on which direction you want it to go, and that can go to one of two places. So the single pole is still a single uh, function, but it can go either up or it can go down, right? It can go to one of two, two places. Single pole, double throw. Not entirely sure what the enable is. I didn't look that up, but single pole double throw. Those are the kinds of switches we're going to use in lab today. Then, of course, is single pole triple throw. Um, we th those are not really of interest. Um, you could obviously have as many throws as you wanted. Um, but then there are also um, uh, let me move on. Uh, yeah, single pole double throw. Si whoops, single pole double throw. Single pole double. Whoops, sorry, that's not, the, that's not the right one. Pause, looking for the basic kinds, and I missed. Single pole, single throw, normally off, uh, normally open, normally closed. Single pole, double throw, again, a single circuit, um, but it can go to one of two places. And then there's the double pole switches. There's the double pole switches. What isn't shown here, and that's why I keep on pausing, um, th these are all different kinds of switches, but the basic switches are the, then there's the double pole switches. Now, double pole switches allows for two circuits. We actually, and the reason why I pr bring that up is because we actually had, we used the double pole switches in lab. The, the gray push button switches, which, um, which you've, which, again, if you've seen them in lab, I'm sorry, uh, this is assuming that you've been in lab and you've done, done, this, done uh, labs with push button switches, um, where there are four, four input, four wires. Um, they are double pole single throw switches. In other words, they've got two circuits coming in and two circuits going out. They're independent circuits. A single throw, meaning a single push, will either connect the two circuits or disconnect the two circuits. And then there's such a thing as a double pole double throw. Um, I, I bring up the double pole double throw. That's the one um, it lowered the DPDT here. Um, only because uh, we have a bunch of those in the physics lab, if you've ever seen them before. And this is actually a double pull, double throw. Whoops, double pull, double throw. Notice that you would have, you could have an input going in here, an input going in there, output going in there, uh, input going in there, an input going in there. The handle here can flip all the way around to the other side 
and whatever is, uh, and then we can have um, these connections coming off of here, right? So we can either have the two red connections on the left go to the two black connections, that's the way it's hooked up now, or we can take that, that whole handle and flip it all the way over to the other side and have the two red connections on the right go to the two black connections. But notice that the connection, right, that this connection here, that's an independent connection of this connection. That's the, um, the double pole. That's the double pole. It's a double throw because it's got two sides, one, two, um, as opposed to just open and closed. Um, and it's a double, double, that's the double throw, the fact that it has two sides. And double pole is the fact that you can do two circuits at once. Okay. Those are the different kinds of switches. In lab today, uh, at today's lab, we are gonna be particularly interested in the single pole double throw. The reason why is because we are going to want to go from zero volts to five volts uh, and have that go to between zero volts and five volts. So we wanna have a zero volt connection, a five volt connection, have a switch between them. So that's the, the, the interesting switch for us is the single pole double throw. So here's my single pole double throw switch, um, I'm going to have an input of zero volts on one input on one, one part of the switch, an input of five volts on the other part of the switch, and the output of the switch um, is going to go to my logic. So this is going to allow me to send a zero or a one to my logic. And I can move the, the, um, the throw, what's called the throw, up or down, right? So I can make a connection up here, or I can make a connection down here. Um, and so I can go between zero and five volts. How do I uh, actually physically set that up, right? So what that's gonna look like is this. Physically, just attach a power supply and attach a ground. Uh, and the power supply and the ground can have the, have the same common ground. You should always have a common ground, right? So that's zero volts and that's five. It's a five volt power supply, so that's five volts. Um, so that's gonna be what we put into the logic. As I mentioned in previous part of the lecture, the problem with a switch is that when we throw that throw um, between the two poles, right, as I th move that throw, when I make contact, right, and let's say I'm trying to make contact with zero volts, at first, I, and just for maybe a millisecond or two, I don't make a very good contact. And so the voltage versus time, um, <clears throat> let's say, um, yeah, I, I just said as I throw the throw to the zero volts. Let's say that we're, we're at zero volts and I go to five volts. So let's say I move it down to five volts and I disconnect from zero volts. Whoops, let me go ahead and redraw that. I want to, I go from zero volts, I start with zero volts um, and let's go ahead and graph the voltage versus time. Um, and I start with zero volts. Let me go ahead and graph this. Zero volt, zero volt, zero volts. And then at this moment, I throw the switch, right? Throw the switch at that moment. Um, <clears throat> and ideally, what we want when we throw the switch to five volts, we want it to pop right up to five volts and do that. But because it takes a millisecond to make a solid contact with the five volt connector, what it actually does is it oscillates up and down for a couple of milliseconds, maybe as much as a couple of milliseconds before it settles on the five volts. And so this, of course, is what's called the bounce. And we don't like bounce because what that shows to a computer, especially you know a computer that's waiting for another bit, clock strikes and we switch the switch right when the clock strikes, um, and that's the, what we're seeing here is a one zero one zero one before it stays at one, right? Before it stays at high. Um, so we're sending in some false bits. It meant to be just a zero to a one, but instead it was zero one zero one zero one. Um, so we got to debounce that switch. Before I debounce the switch, let me add one more thing real quick. Left off um, that that at least when we're um, building real circuits that we should get into the practice of doing is putting in resistors to protect um, uh, protect parts of the circuit that we don't really that that can't take large amounts of current. So, for example, LEDs. When we're putting LEDs into circuits, 
right, this is an LED. When we're putting LEDs into circuits, if I just attach five volts to that LED, um, for most LEDs, five volts to an LED to ground is gonna, because the LED really, it's got a little voltage drop against across it, but it acts like a short to ground. And so what it does is it pulls a large current um, and if it's actually a short to ground, that LED is going to um, pull the maximum current that the power supply can supply and the current gets to be too big and you blast the LED, you destroy the LED. And we talked about that, we've talked about that previously when we used LEDs, we found that the LEDs that we, were using, that, that we have used sometimes can take it. Um, but really what we want to do is we want to protect the circuit by, put, by putting in a little resistor, a resistor, not necessarily a little resistor, a resistor of the right value to protect the LED. You can actually go ahead and look up what's the current that an LED is meant to draw. Um, you can take, let's say that we're making this a five volt power supply and the LED, you know, maybe is, is made to draw 0.1, is, is made to ideally operate at 0.1 amps. Then you can figure out exactly what resistor you need, right? So if, for example, if I for the LED is supposed to be 0.1 amps, um, therefore V, we can put a resistor in there to, to, to make it go down to 0.1 amps. V equals IR, um, therefore five volts equals 0.1 amps times whatever resistor we put in there. And so therefore R is equal to, uh, I think that's 50 ohms. Okay, a 50 ohm resistor. Um, and typically, what what we what we what you actually calculate if you look up the correct um, prefer, preferred current for a LED, um, they run about a couple hundred ohms. So it's good to protect your LED by putting a couple hundred ohms between the voltage power supply, sorry, the power supply and the LED. In the same way, um, in this in this switch, when I when I'm using um, a five volt power supply to power logic, the logic itself. Um, can't just, you know, if you put in too much current, you're gonna, you're gonna destroy it, uh, the logic. So we will, we will typically um, put a, a resistor in to protect the logic. And you're, you know, and I couldn't tell you exactly what resistor, but basically what you see uh, a lot is just sort of one kilo ohm resistors all over the place in a circuit just to protect, uh, keep the, um, the, the currents down. Um, and so this, this, um, this switch, before you put the five volts into the logic, really should have a one kilo ohm um, resistor after the five volts. So what that would look like is, we can draw this a little bit better anyway, um, what that would look like is we have a resistor and here, okay, like this. And so this is a one kilo ohm resistor. So we would typically, so that's what that resistor is there for. The resistor is there just to keep the current from being too high because the logic, all it wants to see is five volts or zero volts. It doesn't care how much current it is. The only reason why it cares it being high enough is that it can actually read a signal or not being too high is that you don't burn out the logic. So you gotta keep the current down more, more often than up. Um, and we do that just by throwing in a one kilo ohm resistor or something like that. Um, and sometimes we have to care about the size of the resistor, but sometimes it's just put any resistor in there just to make sure we're not treating it like a short and pulling too much current. Okay, so I say that because in the debounce switch, we have the one kilo ohm resistors. I just wanted to justify why they're there. They're only there for that reason, so we don't pull too much current. Okay, so the debounce switch. It's a little bit more complicated than, than the, the switch I have in yellow here. The debounce switch, um, looks like this. Let me just draw it. So the debounce switch requires two power supplies, actually. Um, but it's still going to be, a, well, so the switch, now the switch that we were using, the single throw double pole switch is still right here, right? But the switch is, um, is a bit separated from the five volt power, power supplies. Um, the, and so we got two five volt power supplies and it can switch between a five volt power supply sending a signal into the S input of an SR latch or a five volt power supply sending a single signal into the R input of an SR latch. And so what this does, is it allows us to debounce the switch so that now the output Q, that's just my output, right? That's my output um, of, it's now, it's either gonna be high or low. Um, and it's gonna be high or low depending on 
whether my switch is connected to A or B. And so we're, we're just going to take our switch and two power supplies, attach them to an SR latch. Now remember, SR latch is just two NAND gates. So this is just two NAND gates. And I don't care about the Q naught output. Um, all I care about is the Q output. And so the S input or the top input is just the input to the top AND gate, NAND gate. And the R input is the input into the bottom NAND gate. Um, okay, so let's see how this debounce switch works. Note that when the switch, which, is, uh, which I've circled in yellow, is attached to the A input, when it's attached to the A input, what you're doing is you're shorting the five volt power supply. And what that does is it makes S equal to zero. So when the switch is attached to A in the state it is right now, that gives an S input of zero. And since the, and look at the bottom power supply, the bottom power supply um, is going right into the R input. So that means R is high, so R is one. So in, its car, in, in the, the state that I've drawn, um, S is equal to zero and R is equal to one. And let's see what the output is. So the output of the SR latch, I need to draw the truth table. Current state, looking at the, uh, at, at the table, um, QN is going to equal one. So in its current state, uh, Q is equal to one. So let's see what happens when I switch it to B. When I switch the switch to B, then if I switch the switch to B, switch to B, then um, S is going to equal one and R is going to equal zero. What happens when S equals one and R equals zero? Then we change the output to a zero. But I forgot the most important part. When I switch to B, there's going to be a moment um, between A and B. It takes time to switch that switch when neither A nor B is going to be connected to ground. So before I switch to B, right, before it gets to B, as I switch to B, so this is so with it in good contact at A, we had that, and the output was one at A. Um, and then as I switch to B, then S is equal to um, one and R is equal to one. So as soon as I lose contact for the very first time, so here's, wh here's where what's important, is I'm gonna take be, be, be real clear here. I'm going to draw a different color. Uh, I'm going to take this part of the switch, and as soon as I lose contact with A, it may bounce, right? It may just, it may lose contact, gain contact, lose contact, gain contact. But as soon as I lose contact with A, um, that it, the very first time, it turns S equal 1 and R equal to 1. And that says, hey, don't change the state. Don't change the output state. Right? So it can bounce all it wants on the A input, and it's not going to change the state. And then while it moves, right, while it moves downward to B, both S and R is equal to 1. And so it's not going to change its state. Um, it's not going to change the state until the first time it touches B. The very first time it touches B, it will change the state, and that's where we were as the very first time it touches B, and remember, if it bounces, it's gonna to touch B a few times. Very first touch to B, and what happens is um, S equals one, R equals zero, and what that does is it changes the state to Q equals zero, but if it bounces, it's just going to bounce between these two states, right? It's going to bounce between S equals 1, R equals 1, and S equals 1, and R equals 0. And so it won't change the state. So Q remains 0. So you see how this is a debouncer? So I move it away from A, even if I, if I shake my hand while I'm moving away, away from A, it's not going to change the state until the first time it touches B. It changes the state, and then if it vibrates and it doesn't quite make good contact with B, it's not going to change state again until it gets back to A. So it only changes state the very first touch it makes with A or B. So this is a switch debouncer. That's the next part of the lab, uh, and now we'll get to sequential logic. That will be the next part we do.